Well, hello. I finally got this started. I'm hoping that you can find me here. I had to recreate this event for some reason. It wasn't showing. So, now, I'm Cindy Phillips, and I am here to show you today some really cool cards. I'm going to take another deep breath. And we're going to get started. Okay, let me get it. I'm going to turn my camera down so you can see me. This is the first card that we're going to be doing today. It's called Triple Time Stamping. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. I used the Hand Pin Petals Stamp Set, and we're going to need a large block. We're going to need, this is a card, an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper that has been cut at five and a half and scored at four and a fourth. So I'm going to crease this and I'm going to put this to the side. Okay. For this card, we're going to be using a five and a half by four and a fourth basic white card stock. We're going to be using a three and three fourths, I mean, uh, let's see, white. This is a two and two thirds by two and two and three fourths by two and three fourths. And this is three and three fourths by five. So I'm going to be placing this in an equal position here. I want it to be to the left, but I am keeping in mind that I am going to have black cardstock backing it. So it's going to be an eighth of an inch around. And then this is going to be about the same distance here that it is there, but I have to keep in mind also the black cardstock that will back it. Okay, so we have three pieces of paper. Now, I am going to take this one and just place it here so I'll keep it in place. I don't want to lose my alignment. And you can even take this, that surgical tape I told you about the other day. It would be great for doing this. Okay. I think I had it lined up better before I put that on there. Okay. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We'll slide it down just a tad. All right, now, we're gonna use the hand pin petals stamp set, like I said. And we're going to be using this large stamp. Now, I'm going to show you here. This is the one that I'm using. It is a larger one with the three flowers, or actually three big flowers and then small flowers, and then the grouping of leaves. I'm going to place this on my block. I'm going to be using black memento, tuxedo black memento ink. And I'm going to be stamping, not stamp, I am going to stamp, but I'm going to ink this stamp up. I want to make sure that it's inked up well. Okay, so because my stamp is long this way, I'm going to place it like this, and I'm going to place it down on top of all three pieces of paper. 
and I'm going to hold it there for a minute so the ink can transfer. I want to get a good transfer. I'm going to hold this and lift up. Okay. Realign that. Then I'm also going to put a little bit right down here. So I'm going to ink it up again. And I'm going to turn it this way. I want just a tad right here. Just a tad. And I'm going to put that leaf right up there in that corner. And I'm going to press down. Now you see that I have paper underneath my stamp. And I'm going to hold on to it. So there. We have a design now. Close that back up. Alrighty, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to back these pieces. I'm gonna use my silicone mat and my Tombow tape. And I'm going to adhere this tape to its corresponding black piece. I'm going to make sure that you can see this. Oh dear, that's not the right size. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to cut this down just a, just a little bit here. And we'll cut it down like an eighth on each side. Now that may mess up my alignment, but it is going to make the backing work. Okay, it will still work. Okay, so then we have the three by three piece of black, and we're gonna take this piece, which should be two thirds, two and three fourths, by two and three fourths, but I have, yep, Good, it worked. So I'm going to center that, get rid of that little adhesive right there, a little bit right there, okay? And that one's ready. So now I'm going to put adhesive on this larger piece. This is probably one of the easiest cards you can make. And you can see I am really using the 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 tape I'm addled and that's what happens when you get addled. Alright now slide this over and I'm going to put this down where it's even around as even as I can get it here. Okay. Okay. Now, now we are ready to align and I think that's going to be pretty much, that's going to work. So I'm going to put my adhesive here. doesn't always, that is a bit quite messy, but it'll work. Now I've got to make sure my alignment is correct again. It goes like this. And I'm going to line that up, keeping it equal distance around. Okay. Now, with this one, it's going to go right in here, but I know I am going to have this little piece right here that's going to be jutting out onto the main portion of this card front. So it's going to, if you see, it lifts up. 
what we're going to do is we're going to give that a little bit of thickness with um, this my card scrap card scraps. I'm going to put some on that side and I'm going to use my Tombow glue. Now, because it will, I'm going to put it right here and then line it up That's looking good. That looks good. Let's see that. Needs to go about right there. Okay. Now, what we've just done is we've given, we didn't even adhere this side. I can adhere this side. But what we are doing, and you can do this instead of using foam dots. Um, when you run out, you can use um, your cardstock to build it up so it will look like it has um, a foam dot underneath. Just a little bit too far over. Right there, I think. Okay, so now. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's built up just a tad. All right, now, it would have been best that we stamp a sentiment here before we put this down because when you mess up, you've messed up. I'm gonna show you the sentiment we're going to use. And it seems to be in my other box. Here it is. It's the Peaceful Moments. And I'm going to use this Happy Birthday stamp. Peaceful Moments is also in our annual catalog. And I'm going, haven't used all of these, but I have used this one. So it's ready to go. So I'm going to, I can use a smaller one, but since this one is handy, and I'm gonna line this up to get it as straight as I can. It actually looks pretty straight. I have a really bad habit of making the right side go up, which looks like that's what's happening here. I'll just have to correct. All right, so once again, we're going to use the ink and we're going to get it all loaded, the, the stamp set. And I'm going to put happy birthday and yay, it worked. Okay, now... I'm ready to put this onto my card base. I have to make sure that I put it the right way. I have done that backwards before. All right. It's best if I do it on my silicone mat. And I discovered something new about this silicone mat the other day. If you do like me and you get the wrong side all glued up with tape or whatever, you can put this right down and do it on the other side where you need it and it comes right up. Alrighty, so I'm going to put this right here 
Oop, that's not quite right. Oh, goodness, it hasn't stuck down well. Well, maybe it did there. All right, let's try this again. We're going to There we go. Okay, now it is down. Now, I want to embellish this. So I'm going to be using the matte black dots in our annual catalog. Um, on page 43. And I'm going to be using my take your pick tool. And I'm going to put a small one, I think, here. And I'm going to put one here. Maybe a larger one. Let's, let's slide it over a little bit so it's not in the same place, lined up in the same place. And then maybe one over here. Let's, let's see if we can do something. Well, we'll just turn that over. Hey, let's put it right there. There we go. Now, we have a very nice happy birthday card. Now, I want to show you, this is the one I did earlier. I used, this is from, uh, this sentiment is from a retired stamp set. But I did still stamp it with the hand pin petals. Here's one I did with Happiness Abounds. I stamped this flower, this one and this one, and then add in my leaves in. And it looks very much like this, these two, but the flowers are bigger, but you get the same effect. So there's our first card, black and white, which makes a stunning statement with the black embellishments. I'm sure it's going to please. Okay, now, I'm going to slide these to the side because I'll be using them again later. Alrighty, by the way, guys, cat food boxes work great as trays. Alrighty, so our next one that we're going to be working on is called the Spotlight Technique. This is a fun card. As you can see, I have stamp butterflies all around. This is not one stamp. And then we spotlighted one area and put a sentiment on it. And once again, even though it's black and white, mainly it's quite stunning. This was created with the Butterfly Brilliance stamp set that is in our annual catalog. Okay, now, here's the one that we're going to be doing today. This was actually not stamped. This is the perfectly pinned paper DSP. It's a 12 by 12 pack of paper and it has such pretty designs. They're oh so many pretty designs. There's an example. And the backs are just as pretty. Okay, so we now have this card that we're going to work on. Let's put that one aside and we're going to put that one right there so we can keep it as our sample and our example. So I have my card base. Okay, it's creased. Let me put that to the side. And we have here, if we put this down, we have got the five and a fourth by four backing card. I've cut 
three and three fourths by five out of this designer series paper. Now, what we're going to do is before anything is we are going to cut out the circle that we want to highlight. And I'm gonna do that with the layering circles die. So I'm going to take out, the first one is a two and a half or two inch diameter that we're going to be using, which is going to be this one. One, two, one, two, yeah, this one. Mm. Nope, that's not the right one. Is th this one, yes, right here. So I am wanting to highlight this main flower there with some of it underneath. So I'm gonna put everything to the side and I'm gonna bring out my dye machine, my cut and dye embossing machine. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use this. Now you need a flat surface. It does have feet under here that will suction somewhat to the table, but I'm going to use it right here so you can see and I can slide it. Okay, so I'll slide it right here. All right, then we open up each side. It might be best if I do it this way. Okay, and on this you have your base plate. You have the next plate, which is, it tells you exactly what to use here. One, two, and three. So this is one, this is two, and you're gonna use one of the cutting plates. That's three. Now, you would normally use another one of these cutting plates, but I have discovered the magic mat which really helps keep this glass mat from bowing. So I am going to be using that. So I'm gonna place down this and I'm going to let me turn it so I can see it this way. I want to highlight this flower and some of the flowers above. I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to push it in and turn. It goes right through very easily. I lift it up. It almost felt like it didn't even have to turn it hard. And there we have now we're gonna save this piece because this is the piece that's gonna go down here. And then we're gonna put this one on top. So I'm gonna slide this to the side. Okay, and we're going to focus on this. Now, oh, the other thing that we needed to do was to cut out the backing piece to this. And it would have been a two and a fourth inch circle. Um, the next one, now where did I move the, here it is, right here. It would have been this one, because it's just a tad bigger, as you can see. But we have the magic of technology here. And I am going to show you in just a second a backed piece, but I wanted to show you this first. This was done with fresh freesia alcohol ink markers, and this is pale papaya. Oh, no, it's not, excuse me, that's petal pink. And then the green is soft succulent. So the wonderful thing, there are two tips. So pull it in, 
and then there's the brush end. For this, I was using the brush. There's already graying in here, so this graying serves as your shadowing. So, let me show you. If you very carefully, you have to do this when you're really calm, your hands aren't shaking. And even if it, they were shaking, that's part of the flower there. Okay, now see, I used the Fresh Freesia there. I would continue and I would color in all of these flowers. The petal pink is what I did for the center. Now, if you keep going over it, it gets a little bit darker. But I didn't think that this light color needed anything much darker than that. And that is why I also chose this soft succulent. And I'll show you here. It's sort of a grayish green, which is really pretty with this. And because it's got shadowing, it looks like I have really worked hard. Okay, now I will finish that up at a later time. But like I said, because of the magic of technology, we already have one done. But I did it in lavender. It's not lavender, it's Highland Heather, but it looks like a lavender. And I wanted you to see the difference. Now, I use, did use pale papaya with this center, but I still used a soft succulent here, and I backed that in the two and one fourth diameter circle die cut out of, of the black cardstock. Now, so what I'm gonna do, I've got this piece ready. I'm going to get my silicone mat again and my tape runner and I'm going to put adhesive on the back here now you could put glue around this circle which would make it probably a lot easier to do but it can also be done with this all right so I'm going to back this by placing this on equal distances around okay now what we're going to do here is we're not just going to glue this down we're going to use Stampin' Dimensions. That's going to pop it up just a little bit to give it some more dimension. These are the Stampin' Dimensionals that you'll find in our annual catalog. Um, I did have a page number for you. Uh, page 127 is where you'll find these. Uh, let's see, how did I do that? Here we go. Pull off, and I'm going to go around. Now, I did try doing just four on a card I did earlier, but it um, sort of bowed a little bit. So, I am choosing to add one more stamping dimensional. Like I said in our last video, I choose to go overboard sometimes because I just want to make sure that it's going to do what I want it to do. All right, now, we've got to figure out exactly how we did this as far as the three little flowers are over here. That flower goes there. This one 
and the leaves are lined over here. Okay, so now we have this in a different place, mind you. It could even be like this, um, but or like this. I like it like this better where it's more um, toward the top. So now I need my card base, which I set to the side. Hmm, right here underneath what I was doing here. And here is my fold. I am going to put my adhesive on here. This really works best when you sort of jerk it to the right to cut it off. It doesn't stream as badly. And then one or two times here in the center. All right, so I think I wanted to do it this way. And I'm going to glue it down equal distances around as best I can. Okay, now it's time for sentiment. Now, for this sentiment, I decided to use Art Gallery. And I used, I'm trying to find where I put it, right here. Happy birthday. This is going to be a happy birthday day. And I stamped it, and before I glued it down to the black cardstock, I notched it here. I glued it down and then notched the cardstock. So I'm going to place this where I think this is going to go right on the edge. And I'm going to put it up just a little bit. Okay. So, right here. You've seen me use both glue and use, not today, but you've seen me use both glue and the tape runner. And I like them both. I used to be nothing but a tape runner person. But then I decided, as time went by, that I like glue just as much. There are downfalls to the glue, however. It gives you wiggle room when you're positioning something. But then, once it's stuck, it is stuck. It is not coming off. The tape, however, does not give you that wiggle room, but you can get it off to, to fix something or to replace something if you need to. Okay, I'm going to be using the 2021-2023 In Color Jewels. I think they're listed in the catalog now as In Color Buttons. Um, let's see. And they are in the catalog on page 142. So, I'm going to get my Take a pick tool and I'm going to get one of these. This is actually a fresh freesia dot, but it looks very much like lavender when you place it on your card. So we can use it either way. Get that adhesive right there. It's a little bit. Well, that one's not looking right. Let's do this one. There we go. So we have the Highland Heather and we have the Fresh Freesia. One is turned vertically, one horizontally. Two beautiful cards. The black and white is just stunning with that spotlight. And again, happy birthday. So we're now ready to move on to card three. Okay, 
I'm going to show you a sample that I made and I showed it online. This is called die cut stamping. And what we've done is we've die cut a shape here, pasted it down and then stamped. Now, you could have stamped beforehand and then cut this out and place it down, but I find that it's easier to do it this way. So this is the, the card, a sample of the card. What I'm going to do though, is I'm gonna stick with this black and white thing. I have got my card base. And I am going to crease this if I can find my bone folder. I wonder what I did with my bone Well, that's okay, because I have another one. I have two more. So I'm going to crease it. So it's ready to go. So I'm going to lay this right here. Now, what I decided to do is to use part of that beautiful, perfectly penciled paper. And I think this is the one. No, that's not it. As you can see, there's just lovely paper underneath on the opposite side. And I used, well, I don't know if I'm gonna find it or not. This one. I really like this. It looks sort of washed out and distressed, which is going to work fine with what we're going to do. So, once again, I'm going to be using the hand pin petals, and I'm going to be using this big stamp. So, I did have it right here. Oh, here it is, waiting for me to clean it. Okay, now, I first, though, am going to take this black cardstock and back, and this is the backing for this paper, and voila, there it is. Now, I will be placing it right here, and as you noticed, I have it level with the top and the bottom of my card. But we have got to cut this out, and then we're going to stamp. And we're gonna do that with this, the dies that go with this hand pin petals, right here. And they're called pinned flowers. Pin flower styles on page 173 of the catalog. And here is the one that we're going to be needing. And the stamp set is also on that page. In the last annual catalog, it came as a bundle, but it no longer is bundled. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that die, did I put it back? Nope, there it is. And I'm going to lay it down here, and these big leaves, I know I want to go at the, the bottom. And I'm going to place this and run it through my die where the center of that is right on the edge where that black cardstock uh, ends on the side there. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna use my surgical tape and hope that I can find where the end of it is. <laughs> Which is gonna be difficult. I had the end of it, and then I guess it just decided that it needed to go back. 
whether you know it. Okay. I'm going to stick my scissors in here and make an end. All right. So, now, when I do this, it's a double thickness until I can wind it back around. I would not use that part. But right there, I'll save that for something else. And right here is the end. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to tape this down and I want it to be about the same distance and it does seem to be. And I'm just going to lightly touch that. I'm going to bring back in my cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to get the plates that go with this. And I'm going to do it from this side so you can see. I'm going to put this down like that. I have one, two, and this is three. This would be four. So I'm going to run it through. And I'm doing this left-handed and backwards. Okay. Now. And here it is. Now I very gently pull that and it doesn't tear. Okay, so now we have a cutout and this part you can throw away. All right. Or you might find some use for it. Who knows? So, again, that silicone mat. And this time I'm going to use glue because the way this is cut out, you're going to need glue in those little places to make it adhere. There's no way you can use tape for that. And I'm going to make sure to get some up in those little places, those little pointy places. It's hard to see when you have it held over a black silicone mat. Okay. Alrighty. Now, I am going to be, but you can see better here. I'm going to, I want just a little bit of white there. And I want to make it just as close to the edge as I can. Now, I have a spot here where I am ready to stamp. I still have my stamp on the block and I'm going to bring in my ink pad and I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to check it looks like the ink is transferring well just one more time now I need to Make sure that I get it in the right direction and I don't drop this. As you can see, oh, where'd it go? I'm just going to lay that right there to hold it down. And I am going to place this as best I can on my paper and stamp. Now I'm going to hold it down. I want the ink to transfer. And lift up and there we go and it's in there perfectly now this would also be pretty too with this part embossed is that that may not stamp as 
as well. You could cut this whole thing out and place it down onto an embossed uh, paper. That would be really nice. Now, for the sentiment, I have this sentiment already ready. And this is Happy Birthday. And it was cut out of Peaceful Moments. Right here. And backed. And it's just a tad bigger all the way around. Close that up. Now, I'm going to be putting it here. I think about like that. But I need to put some cardstock up underneath there so it will rest instead of drooping down. So, I'm going to get my black. My black cardstock here. And I'm going to determine if I put it there, okay, about right there. And I don't want it to hang over out, actually. So, there's my silicone mat again. And I'm going to use my glue. And this I'm going to put toward the end. And give it just a second to let it dry. And I'm going to glue here. And I'm going to glue here. And then I'm going to just butt it right up to that. Slide it up just a tad. And glue it down. Now, I think this, this one, my example, only had one embellishment here. But I think I'm going to put it on the card face itself. So I'm going to get one of these small ones and place right there. I'm going to get a larger one. Maybe put right there. And a large one maybe over here. I think I'll do it right here. Okay, and we're finished. And we have another black and white, but stunning card that says happy birthday. Now, and this is the one I did earlier. They do look similar, don't they? <laughs> this has been so much fun. Let me raise my camera. This has been so much fun showing you how to make these cards. They are really fun cards to make with many different stamp sets. And that's what my hope is, is that what I'm showing you how to do, that you can do with what you have. Or if you choose, you can always purchase these stamps at my in my store at Cindy Stampin' Up, Cindy Phillips, no, cindyphillips.stampinup.net mm, My mind went blank there. Um, or if you need for me to help you with an order, I can do that too. My contact information is on the About section. Um, find uh, the number or email me. I will respond very quickly. Also, please remember that any of the cards that I make, I can turn into a kit for you. If you don't want to stamp, or you don't want to die cut, um, or if you don't have the tools to do that, I can create a kit for you with as many cards as you like. And I can also switch the cards up. So you might have one of one 
behind one of another and even might have a third different card. I will be glad to help you in any way I can. If you don't have a demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Contact me and like I said, I will respond very quickly. And until next week, I hope you will dream and create. Bye-bye now.